Uh, Robbie, we're with Robbie today at Black Phoenix Films. Now, tell me about Black Phoenix Films because, I mean, I don't know anything about it. It just sounds like some kind of bike porn. Okay, well, yeah, that actually did happen once. We had one of our friends uh, send us a package and a, an old lady rang up and thought that there was porn being imported into our local area. A complaint came into the Australia Post Office, but we sorted that out. It actually started out, uh, a friend of mine, Josh and I, uh, started making a mountain bike movie when there was a bit of a lull uh, about five years back and from there we you know continue to make our own movies as well as distribute other you know producers movies from around the world and it's sort of grown into a pretty uh, sizable wholesale operation for us and you know we've branched out into other media forms like we now have a magazine clicked magazine and uh, we work on that as a quarterly publication and you know in between you know shooting films and distributing films Okay, so there's a big market out there for people buying this kind of the footage. Well, Is it kind of like the crusty demons type thing? Yeah, you know, in a lot of ways, like kids are driven by the hype of DVDs, and and it's uh, there is a big market. There's a big core market, and then there's a flow-on market in the mainstream as well. So a lot of the new titles that come in, they they go out to a lot of the retail bike stores, and then from there we see them moving into Target and Kmart and all the big, you know, the big retail outlets as well. So yeah, there's a lot of units being moved, you know, to a lot of people. So it's good. and have you got a background in marketing? Uh, I have no background whatsoever other than riding bikes. Oh, okay, because you're doing all the right, the right parlance there with your um, terminology, your flow on, blah, blah. Um, yeah, it's not so much a background. I just think we, you know, we understand what we do and, and that helps us do what we do. Uh, we haven't really had any guidance other than the fact that we like to make good products and, and sell good products. So our range is made up of good stuff and you don't, uh, it's, you know, it's not hard to sell stuff when you're into it. And do you star in any of your movies? I did in the first one. I got like one or two little roles in uh, in previous ones, but I've taken more of a back seat, uh, helping Josh with camera work and uh, just making sure everything's coordinated and dealing with professionals as opposed to myself. And where do you mainly shoot your uh, movies? Well, last movie, our last major title that we produced, uh, we shot throughout Europe um, in the in the second half of the film. We started out it was it's basically a progressive look at the way riders, you know, deal with an entire 12 months of racing. So it started with their training in their hometowns covered the national mountain bike season in Australia. We went over and did the season opener in America at the Norba Sea Otter event. And then from there we went over to Italy, filmed a World Cup round, a World Championship round and a World Series final round and then uh, flew home. So put that together and that's Drift 3 and it's been out for about six months. Okay, so does it focus on individual mountain bikers? Yeah, that's that's how we got the finance for it. We approached the you know, individual companies that sponsor the riders. Uh, so we had three major companies with three professional riders, all Australians, and uh, they basically gave us enough budget to follow them around to each race and uh, you know put it put it out there and put it together. So it was quite good. And um, did they have a lot of fun being on it, or did you just? Did, oh, they well, that, get, did it get a bit painful the for them? The thing about it is uh, I actually started out you know, racing and was on the junior Australian team with Dave as our actual uh, you know, our coach or and our assistant manager for the team. Not and, our Dave. Yeah, your Dave. <laughs> and uh, it start, that's how I met all these guys racing with them. And now you know, they've gone on to pro careers and we work more from a media side. And so it's, it's really easy. It's really easy to have a lot of fun. It's easy to get stuff done because you're, you're not asking too much of them. You know? Hey, Robbie, I also believe you have a magazine. Yeah, I do. I have clicked magazine. It's a little, uh, no, no, no. little just, one over just, there. Just cool, cool for a moment. And who asked you to write your first story? Um, there's this guy called Dave. I nearly killed him with a plate once. Uh, we didn't want to wash up at the World Championships and we actually uh, decided, well I decided that I'd throw this plate off a balcony, but it wasn't until it got airborne that I noticed that it was heading directly for Dave's head <laughs> and uh, he stormed up, yelled at me and I still had to wash the plate because it didn't break. But. Um, <laughs> You know, it's all right, but yeah, Dave did encourage me to write for my first article for Freewheel magazine, and and his actual advice was, um, don't limit yourself to just one magazine. You know, there's bigger possibilities for your writing, and it's just led to you know owning and editing my own magazine. So that's oh, pretty cool. That's right, like the Remington Man. Um, I don't know the Remington Man. I'd like to look like the Gillette Man, but you know. No, he bought his own company. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, no, it's um, it's I'm pretty happy with how things are moving. It's quite good. Sounds great. Well done, Robbie, and thanks for talking to us today. No worries, thanks very much.